as Andrew just introduced me, uh, this is my name, this is my photo. I'm, uh, I'm AWS Community Hero because I've been doing uh, some things uh, for AWS uh, community and uh, yeah, also organizing different events. Uh, usually travel around because I like uh, talking to the community and talking uh, just to understand what kind of uh, stuff people come up with. And uh, the idea is that I usually want to get something from the community, somehow generalize it and uh, leave it a little bit better condition than it was before. So that's, that's what I do. And uh, yeah, Terraform AWS modules uh, is one of the main projects which I spent uh, last uh, five, more than five years of my life. Uh, the project itself is quite big. Uh, there are more than 50 different repositories. And uh, yeah, uh, a lot of downloads and a lot of people rely on it uh, for different reasons. Uh, some people use it as is. Some people use it just because uh, they wanted so-called inspiration, where they download stuff, uh, remove my name, and say, hey, this is my stuff. <laughs> this is inspiration, yes. Uh, I don't mind, I don't mind. They keep it behind the uh, firewall, but uh, still uh, GitHub reports that some activities is from certain domains. Okay, no problem. Uh, sometimes people remove license file and uh, say that this is not uh, open source anymore. This is our stuff, proprietary. They want to charge money, but uh, I don't care about these people really. So anyway, uh, there are a lot of people using this stuff. And uh, two years ago, I figured out that uh, serverless is also, uh, well, uh, unknown uh, part. So let's just uh, dive into it because uh, doing Terraform uh, with serverless is hard, and I wanted to make it a little bit simpler, so I started serverless TF project. And uh, all of this work is uh, just impossible to do uh, a kind of alone. Uh, obviously, I need to eat, so thanks to 43 people who uh, buys me bread and butter and something else. Um, yeah, so uh, overall, uh, I live from the open source uh, most of the time. I do some consultancy, but it's a minority because it's usually pretty boring. Like once you implemented the same stuff, uh, you go to another company, implement the same stuff. Okay, but if you do this 20 times, it's pretty boring. So I'm not going to sell you uh, like Terraform AWS modules. Uh, they're like the magic of everything. Look into this picture and try to understand uh, that uh, you can do pretty much the same stuff uh, what is implemented there, right? You just need to go to documentation, uh, read uh, like Terraform resources and data sources yourself, uh, you need to understand a lot of uh, like peculiarities of different uh, integration, different providers, different uh, bugs uh, everywhere in API, in provider, in AWS, in, in many other places. Or you can just use uh, uh, small uh, things, which is Terraform AWS module. So pretty simple, I would say. So this talk is not about uh, like Terraform is the best of the best. You should use it. Right, I mean, if you are in this room, you already understand what is Terraform. So I'm not going to tell you what is Terraform. That's simple. I will just try to focus on uh, several ways to understand Terraform infrastructure as code, because uh, in many situations, uh, you should be doing it maybe a little bit uh, different. And I try to explain what exactly is different. So imagine that uh, you go to your work and you have to implement something like this, where you have uh, different services uh, and uh, somebody draw these diagrams for you and you think like, okay, that's simple. Like uh, what can possibly go wrong, mm -hmm. right? User go to an API gateway and then uh, there are two Lambda functions which are being invoked, some DynamoDB service, some CloudWatch, everything is very straightforward, right? So then person asks you, so what about uh, how this should look as code? As code. As code, yeah. <laughs> so uh, you think about this like, okay, what can possibly go wrong? And you start writing this code like this. So you are connecting a bunch of different resources together. You are getting resources for, uh, let's say, for Lambda function, for API gateway. So you are starting to write all of these things, connect them together. You are going too deep into uh, implementation of, uh, uh, of this stuff. And then you figure out that, okay, a little bit too, uh, too generic. Uh, maybe I need to add some variables, some outputs to this stuff. And you start adding uh, parameters uh, to your resources. That's normal flow, right? Then you figure out that, okay, 
Actually, there are several, but yeah, actually you realize that uh, there are uh, several repetitive things. So you, you naturally start move resources into custom modules like uh, a Lambda module because you're using it twice. So why you should write code twice? You generalize it, you put it into Lambda module, you're happy, you, you improve something. Then you realize that, okay, what I'm doing actually here is not uh, actually moving the needle. I'm doing something what has been implemented already uh, 20 million times. That's amount of downloads of Lambda module. And uh, you go to Terraform AWS module, find existing module for the service which you are using, and just use it. So by doing this, you are not uh, required uh, to, uh, to know internal implementation of this service, of the module, of resources which are implemented inside. You are focusing on just your surface of your configuration values. It will be significantly smaller amount of code for you to understand, and uh, the code will be just... Uh, what is uh, bringing the value to your, uh, to, to your project. So the final result will look something like this, where you have uh, many different module blocks uh, for different functions, like for Lambda function, you call the module, provide all necessary parameters to it, uh, or uh, DynamoDB table, you just specify the name of the table, what kind of attributes you need to specify, and that's it. And uh, same for other resources. So pretty straightforward way uh, from starting uh, implementing using resources and uh, going towards uh, using reusable modules, uh, Terraform AWS modules. So there are a few questions which you need to understand uh, when you are doing this. So at some point you will want to know like, hey, what does this code do, right? You look into some, someone's alt code and you think like, well, probably it's a good idea to know what this code does. Right? And uh, after you uh, kind of scratch the surface, you think like, okay, does it even work as expected? Because I think uh, something is not right and maybe it's totally off. Uh, and then after some time you realize that like, okay, I'm smart enough, I should be able to add feature X because well, well that's what I will be paid for. And uh, then after some time you figure out that like, it's actually taken a bit too much time for me to add new features and maybe I should uh, get feedback a little bit quicker. So let's look into these uh, questions uh, like one by one. So understandability is uh, uh, the word which uh, I like to uh, kind of highlight. Uh, when people say that uh, uh, code uh, does something or code uh, is easy to understand, that's where understandability as a property come into action. We spent more than half of the time in software projects uh, spending on maintenance. Like we are not writing new features every day, even more. We are spending just like five to 10% at most to add new features into the code. Uh, this is uh, like a fact. I, I will actually have slide with all references where I took this uh, information at the very end uh, because uh, yeah, it's just uh, impressive for me to realize that we are spending a lot of time to read code, to not brag about code, <laughs> of course. Uh, and to, uh, uh, to and spend just five to ten percent on actually doing something what is necessary, something new. So understandability is uh, answering on the question why. When we look into the code, we always need to ask questions why. Like why did you write this stuff? Can you do something differently? Or why do you use this resource or not another one? Always asking why will increase. Uh, well, first of all, it will look a little bit strange because some people will say like, isn't it obvious? Like, why are you even asking it? No, please answer this question. And you will see that uh, this is not so obvious even for you. Uh, another uh, aspect of understandability is uh, auto-generated documentation, which means that uh, if something is written as a code, it is possible to automatically generate documentation. And I will have li links at the very end uh, to show what kind of tools can be used for that one. Uh, or even if you have your diagrams as code uh, where you can programmatically generate a relation between different entities and show it inside of your documentation to your users is also a very good uh, supplementary material uh, to increase understandability. Or diagram is diagram is also kind of obvious, right? You can draw something and you can include it into your Confluence page or 
uh, readme it's also very very valuable information and uh, the last point here is dependency and affected scope visualization uh, is something what i like to call uh, when you change something in let's say one uh, piece of configuration how else or what else will be uh, updated or where else i will have to take a look into my code so that uh, to guarantee that nothing is uh, broken. Infrastructure testing is pretty much answering the question, does it work? Right? I guess a lot of people already by this time uh, think like, oh yeah, infrastructure testing is really important because, well, uh, of course I, I need to know, like, does it actually work? And uh, here is my quote from, I don't know, maybe three years old. I still believe into it because uh, the best way of testing in Terraform is to push it into master, wait for half an hour for people who don't pin version, and uh, yeah, and uh, you will see that something is not working. Why you should spend time on really doing something when you can outsource it to the community? <laughs> so that, no, this is uh, pretty much my way of testing, <laughs> really. That's why you will not find any tests in uh, uh, Terraform AWS modules, because I don't know what else to test. Really, there are so many different combinations, so many different use cases, uh, different AWS account may have different setups, uh, different regions. Uh, when you open AWS account, let's say before 2014 or after 2014, they will have different uh, properties and uh, more and more. I, of course, I cannot test all of this and kind of sign it. So I just outsource it to people who don't pin version. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, the reality of uh, infrastructure testing is actually quite simple. Uh, we always have to do, uh, to spend less energy, uh, but uh, to get most of it, right? I think it's a rule of 80-20 or something like this, where I believe that focusing on static analysis using TFLint or Terraform Validate uh, and running Terraform Apply on example is absolutely enough. You don't need to uh, come up with uh, some artificial use case uh, if, uh, if, if you cannot do this. You will be able to do this on later phase. But uh, in, in current situation, with, with tools which we have right now, focusing on static analysis and TFLint is my way to go. I, uh, I think I solve, I don't know, 70% of issues just by using this tool. Well, actually, uh, the next thing you may say, like, uh, OK, but does it actually work as expected? Like, I'm happy that it works somehow, like no syntax error. Uh, but what, what actually is happening? So let's combine these two terms and say understandability in testing. Uh, this is a little bit uh, greenfield area, I would say. And I believe that uh, we have to prefer real languages over general uh, purpose languages much more, just because uh, just because we are dealing with uh, not programmatic uh, entities as such, we are dealing with something what is very close to, uh, to real language, like English, for example, or Hebrew, if you want. Uh, well, you can also use uh, Terraform test with uh, HCL. Right? There is a comment called Terraform test. You can write it. Uh, it doesn't work, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you can use it. Uh, yeah, it's unfortunate that it doesn't work. Uh, I, I had very good, uh, very big hopes that it will eventually work, but it doesn't, so that's, yeah. Okay, uh, actually, I think that uh, uh, the, the proper way of doing this is that uh, there is an open policy agent where we can specify what kind of uh, rules do we want to have. And uh, there are different uh, methods how we can uh, enforce the same uh, open policy agent uh, policies uh, before we run plan and after we run apply. This will guarantee that uh, what we actually wrote uh, is valid across plan and apply. There is uh, no open source project around this tooling yet, but uh, I hope that it will be released uh, in approximately half year time. Uh, by two companies working in yeah, this field, very invisible companies, like I don't know why they don't open source it yet, uh, but at least I believe that this is the right way to do. I believe that uh, using OPA uh, and combine it with Terraform plan is the way to go. 
Or another way to do this is, uh, maybe it's very far-fetched and maybe it's trendy, or I don't know why I'm saying it right now, is uh, look into what OpenAI, or there was project which was called Open Validation, uh, which was written in Java and uh, doesn't have uh, enough supporters at all, but you can search uh, Open Validation, maybe it will do uh, the same stuff. So OpenAI can potentially uh, replace all pub policies too. Oh my God, it says that I am late, but no, I'm not late. I still have plenty of time because I didn't finish my talk. So, <clears throat> so let's uh, uh, put another uh, aspect. Uh, understandability in testing can be achieved if we run all of our code uh, as quick as possible inside of our local environment. And local test, uh, a local stack is the name of the company, uh, name of the product, uh, which allows us to uh, abstract away tools like uh, real AWS uh, account and run AWS resources locally. So if uh, you think that running real stuff is expensive or slow, take a look into local stack and I'm sure that you will be surprised if you don't know what is it about. Well, ideal infrastructure testing is uh, pretty much working code written in human configuration language, which is HCL, if you thought that uh, HCL is short for HashiCorp configuration language, you were wrong for many years. It's human configuration language. <laughs> and uh, human-friendly explanation of what it does. So that this is the way how I, I look into this, that we write uh, HCL code or Terraform config files. They are pretty readable in most of the times. If they're not readable, then put it into module. Let someone else uh, deal with it. Uh, that's, that's just uh, yeah, how it should be, I think. Uh, let's look into how to get uh, feedback quicker because uh, obviously a local stack can help us with running things locally, but we still want to get feedback uh, significantly quicker. Of course, people will say that, no, never run Terraform locally, put into CI, put into some, I don't know, 20 guardrails, 20 people who will approve you, who will do certain things, who will make your life difficult at the end of the day. I believe that there is no need to put uh, anything than just uh, giving developers possibility to run Terraform locally. Uh, of course, you can say that this is not secure. Uh, we want to have everything like aligned. Fine, but just give uh, all developers whatever they need and restrict the surface area using different policies. Uh, I mean, IAM policies, different guardrails. Uh, think about remote runs. Uh, but uh, don't uh, expect that uh, feedback will be okay if you just tell people to commit code, then CI will trigger it, then Jenkins pipeline will do something, then human will interact, then whatever else is happening, and then it's deployed into test. Why? Let people do in isolation uh, locally on the local environment in the local real AWS account, or local stack account, but feedback uh, can be quicker and that's really important that, uh, uh, that you don't start with running Terraform in automation right away. I know that a lot of companies uh, have business like uh, they want you to run it properly, but uh, I, I don't say that they are doing it wrong. I'm just saying that uh, you need to be able to run Terraform locally from day one and without any limitations. Obviously, simplifying the code may be a, a little bit like cliche because you think like, yeah, it's kind of hard to understand what is simple code, hard code. If you think that something is not obvious for you, then it is not obvious for everyone else. So always try to uh, abstract away any type of complexity, hide it away into the module, uh, reuse existing pieces of code, uh, remove some pieces of code. If it doesn't belong here, don't try to squeeze everything what you want into one module, split it into two. Think about this uh, uh, as often as possible. Try to think about uh, infrastructure as code as you would write normal application. Would you do this in the application code? Like, would you uh, put 25 entities into one file? Probably not. So maybe I'll split it into two modules, into two classes, two libraries, and so on. So here is the illustration of uh, what I think uh, develop or use modules. I think that a lot of people still uh, want to pretend that they are dealing with something new, like nobody else 
made this stuff before. I'm going to be the first one dealing with this module. And they go to documentation, they implement all of these resources, data sources, and go back and forth and all this mess. Fine, you can do this. I'm not saying that this is uh, like uh, wrong or right. You can do this, but it will just take a lot of time and you will have to maintain it yourself. Uh, another uh, group of people who understand that this is not the main business, so just use existing stuff. Uh, you will have to focus on just uh, input parameters to the module and uh, you will be able to go home earlier. So what should you want to know? As I said earlier, asking why is really is really the most uh, critical point because you, when you ask why, you actually question and you have a lot of good understanding of what's going on. It's not just about infrastructure as code, but it's also about software development in general. And uh, when you think that uh, uh, does it work as expected, think about that you are writing code or infrastructure as code for humans, first of all, not for machine, not to just save time I'm going to use Terraform workspaces because I can, like, I don't know, for some reason, uh, uh, encrypt my, my uh, logic into some crazy expression nobody will understand. Yeah, you can Im impress humans, but uh, is it really uh, the point? The point is that you write code so that humans understand it. Don't be afraid to write it verbose. Don't be afraid to write it, uh, like, really... Uh, uh, so that any even junior human uh, or human <laughs> junior human <laughs> junior <laughs> junior yeah well junior human you understand it uh, <laughs> junior human can understand it too and uh, again don't be afraid to run Terraform locally uh, I had most of uh, uh, good uh, kind of achievement when uh, we were able to uh, simplify the feedback loop by giving developers much more uh, possibilities, much more access. Uh, of course, this access was not to production, but it was rather similar to production. And uh, if users want to do something, they can experiment much quicker. Uh, unfortunately, this is not possible to do with big enterprises who says like, no, 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 we must have pipeline. Okay, but then don't expect a miracle. Nothing will happen until, I don't know, next month. And uh, yeah, understandability. This is uh, the key word which I want to kind of highlight. That's why I use font 72 here. <laughs> and uh, references, yeah. I was asked to put this on one slide, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I have no clue how, how many minutes left because there are so many timers in front of me. But uh, yeah, I'm ready for questions and yeah. Is there a similar thing like local stack for Azure? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, actually uh, that's good uh, because you are sitting like uh, three meters away from the person who is working for local stack. Not yet, but at least she already got t-shirt so she can answer. Yeah, technically it should be very possible because at the end of the day, uh, the, the way how local stack is working is that they take uh, Terraform providers or they will take Terraform provider and they will be able to understand uh, what you want. There is a lot of other things to do. Uh, as well, but uh, they will be able to achieve this at some point. Yeah. Any other questions? No questions? Good. Thank you.